In this Cricut tutorial, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily screen print with vinyl and your Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants your Cricut and crafting channel, where I show you Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out the best way to use your Cricut cutting machine, well, then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that bell for all the notifications because you, my friend, do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute, especially today. I am so excited for this episode because we are diving into the wonderful world of screen printing with your Cricut cutting machine and some vinyl. Now, truth be told, a lot of the little tips, tricks, and hacks that I picked up and I'm showing you all in today's video, I actually picked up from different YouTube channels. But one in particular, and that is my friend DIY Alex. She has a whole playlist on how to actually screen print using your Cricut cutting machine and some vinyl. So be sure to check out the link to that down in that description box below. But as far as what we'll need to make this Cricut magic happen, well, we are obviously going to need a Cricut cutting machine. Now, Y'all know I'm biased with Cricut, right? I love my Cricut cutting machines. I'm using my Cricut Maker, but you could just as easily use a Cricut Joy or a Cricut Explore Air 2 as well. In reality though, any type of cutting machine that works with SVG cut files, you can do this with. We are also gonna need a shirt to apply our screen printing to, right? Now it doesn't have to be a shirt, but that's what I'm using for today's video. Now I am using this three quarter sleeve raglan baseball t-shirt that I did pick up at Hobby Lobby and this is a kid's t-shirt. Now since we are screen printing, we are obviously going to need a screen, right? And I'm using this screen right here. This is a Speedball brand and this just seems to work out really, really well. So this is what I recommend for you guys as well. We are also going to need some screen printing ink and I am using this right here also from Speedball. This is the screen printing ink for fabric, and that is extremely important to check out to make sure that this is for fabric. Now, some people think that you can actually get by by actually using fabric paint or watered down fabric paint. That is not the case. You really do want to stick with the actual Speedball or really any other brand of screen printing ink. We are also going to need some permanent adhesive vinyl as well as some transfer tape. Now y'all should know by now that my go-to is the Starcraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl. This stuff is so affordable and it's also such a high quality. You can actually get a five foot roll of this stuff for $2.85. I will have this linked for you all down in that description box below as well as everything else that I use or list or mention. And I will also have a discount code for this as well. I will also be using my favorite transfer tape of all time, which is this medium tack transfer tape. This stuff is literally a gold mine, in my opinion. I love, love, love this stuff. We are also gonna need a squeegee for our screen printing. I'm using the Speedball brand right here. And we're also gonna need some painter's tape as well, as well as an actual heat source to actually set in our screen printing ink into our fabric. And for that, I'm actually using the Cricut Easy Press 2. And we're also gonna need a design to make all this with, right? So I wanna hop over now to designbundles.net and show y'all the design that I'm working with today. All right, so this is the SVG cut file that I'm using for today's project. I just personally think that this is gonna be super cute on a kid's t-shirt where it says, I don't need a Valentine, I need a nap. Now, at the time of filming this, it is marked down half off. It was $4 and now it's marked down to $2. Obviously, I cannot make any promises of what the price is going to be by the time that you actually go and check it out for yourself. However, if you catch it for $2, it, it's worth grabbing. That's such a great deal for that. All right, so now I head over to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see, I already had this design downloaded from designbundles.net and actually uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you are new to all this and you're not really sure how to go about doing that, no worries, I got you covered. I will actually link my video on that right up here, as well as down in that description box below. All right, so the first thing that I wanna take a look at is right over here on the right-hand side of the page in the layers panel. So as we can see, this design actually consists of three different parts of the image. So we have this part right here as well as this part down here where it says I need a nap. <laughs> and then this middle part, this says Valentine. Now, since we are gonna be using this for a stencil, basically for our screen printing, we don't need multiple layers to this. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is all selected right here. And I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld or attach. Um, in this case, I mean, either would work. Let's go ahead and just make it weld just for the sake of it. 
All right, so what we need to do now is actually resize this to fit onto our t-shirt. So what I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top left-hand side of the page and click on templates. Now this template option is not currently, at the time of filming this, it's not currently available for iPad or like iPhone users or really any kind of tablet or mobile device. Hopefully they will actually fix that soon and make that available. But as of right now, if you are using those primarily for your designs in Cricut Design Space, you'll just have to take down the measurements of the shirt manually and then size it appropriately. But right up here in the top right hand corner, I'm gonna click inside of this little search bar and I'm just gonna do a search for shirts. And I'm gonna come right over here and select this baseball t-shirt option right here. And if you'll take a look up here at the top left hand side of the page, you can actually select the type of shirt that you're wanting to do. So instead of the men's three quarter sleeve, I'm actually gonna come down here and select the kids three quarter sleeve. Just like that. And also for size, you can come right over here and change the size. However, we don't really need to because I am working with a small t-shirt today. All right, so just to make this design just a little bit easier to see, I'm actually gonna come up here towards the top left hand side of the page click on this little color swatch, and then change this to red. Now, the color of this doesn't amount to a hill of beans. However, it really just helps us to see it a little bit easier on this white background. All right, so basically, I can grab this little resize handle right here at the bottom right-hand side of the page, bring that inwards like so, until we get it to about the size that we want it to be. All right, so I think that that right there should do the trick. So I'm actually gonna come up here towards the top right-hand side of the page and click on Make It. All right, so this is the matte preview screen, which basically shows you where at on the mat your design will actually be cut out at. So what I'm actually gonna do is click this and then just drag this a little bit away from the edges of this, of this vinyl. Maybe somewhere right around here. Mainly because I do want there to be some space around our design for whenever we go to actually screen print this. And another really, really important thing to do is come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on mirror. Now we normally mirror whenever we're doing HTV. However, we also need to mirror whenever we're doing this specifically. And that'll make a little bit more sense here in just a little bit. But right now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on continue. All right, so this is our base material cut settings page where we basically tell our Cricut cutting machine what type of material that we're actually cutting out today. Now I am using the Starcraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl again, my heart, I just love this permanent adhesive vinyl. So my favorite cut setting for that is the premium vinyl cut setting. So for that, what I'm gonna do is come over here and select browse on materials. And I'm gonna come right up here, we're gonna do this little search bar and then just type in premium. And I'm just gonna select premium vinyl right there. And then come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click done. There we go. So all we need to do now is basically load our vinyl onto our cutting mat and load it to the machine and get started cutting. Now let me just say real quick that the color of vinyl that you're using doesn't amount to a hill of beans whatsoever. It has zero bearing on our end result. All right, so per usual, whenever I'm removing my vinyl or any material from my cutting mat, what I like to do is actually flip the mat over and then peel the mat away from the material instead of the other way around, just to help prevent any damage from occurring to your material. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and trim out my vinyl from the rest of the vinyl, just so we don't actually end up wasting a lot of vinyl, where we could just be using the painter's tape. Also, while I'm waiting, I like to keep a lint roller here on my desk just to kind of flick all the little bits and bobs on here as I go. Now, as far as the weeding goes, you basically want to weed in reverse. Basically, everything that you would normally remove, you actually want to leave behind. And everything that you normally leave behind, you would want to actually remove. So in this case, I'm actually going through and removing the design from the rest of the vinyl. Now I'm actually just gonna lay this out right over here. And then with the sticky side facing up towards me so that it doesn't actually stick to our vinyl prematurely. So I kind of roll this out. Actually, it would work going this way. All right, so that right there should do the trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. And still with that transfer tape sticky side facing up towards me, I'm gonna lay this face first or face down onto it. Now what I would normally do in this situation is grab a squeegee and just start burnishing and like go into town, right? 
However, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm just gonna kind of very, very lightly with my hands kind of burnish this down like so. And I'm just gonna grab my pin pin weeding tool again, this little guy right here. This is like a lifesaver whenever it comes to weeding, in my opinion. It's so great, it has a lifetime guarantee, and it makes just weeding a breeze, in my opinion. Like there's no way that you could ever switch or go back to the normal weeding tools after using this, in my opinion. So I'm gonna use that to just kind of pull up a corner of this backing paper, like so. And then just very, very carefully, very slowly pulling the backing paper off. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab my mesh screen here and I'm actually gonna flip it over where this logo that says Speedball is facing down towards my table. And I am now just gonna take this and try to center this in the middle of the screen. Just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rub this down. And then I'm gonna try to actually pull this transfer tape off of this vinyl. Now this can be a little difficult to say the least, <laughs> but you just need to have some patience with it, kind of work with it and kind of get it to where you want it to be. And as far as this transfer tape goes, be sure to hold on to this because you can reuse this stuff over and over and over and over. And for that, what I typically like doing is just grabbing my roll like so, and then just basically applying this to the outside of the roll. And as far as actually smoothing out the rest of this vinyl onto the mesh, I'm just grabbing a squeegee tool right here and just kind of lightly burnish over top of this. Now the parts of the stencil that you really wanna focus on making sure is adhered down nicely to this mesh is all the parts surrounding any kind of cut, whether that be a letter or a design element. Basically the reason why you wanna make sure that that happens is to avoid any kind of leak with the, with the screen printing ink. All right, so that's looking good. So I'm actually gonna flip this back over and then burnish over top of the mesh this time down onto the vinyl. All right, so there we go. So now what we need to actually focus on is all of this blank space around our stencil like so. So to do that, to actually help fill that in, I'm grabbing some painter's tape and we'll just go through here and cover it all up. Now you will notice a lot of the time with this painter's tape, I will actually overlap it some just to make sure that there is less of a chance of a leak. All right, so what I'm doing now is actually grabbing my t-shirt as well as a piece of cardstock like so. Now, the reason I'm using cardstock inside of the t-shirt is just to help prevent any screen printing ink from leaking through the top layer of the shirt to the back layer. Now, you do wanna make sure that the fabric that you're screen printing on is pretty much wrinkle-free. So if you need to, just go ahead and put this under your easy press or your heat press or even just a household iron if you need to. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab this again and then just kind of place this wherever I want the design to go onto the t-shirt itself. Now for me personally, it kind of helps if I can actually look through the stencil itself and kind of see the shirt underneath and just kind of eye it that way as far as where I want this to be laid out. All right, so now I'm just grabbing my screen printing ink like so, and I'm also grabbing what I like to call my crafting spoon. Sounds weird, I know, but basically this is a spoon that is designated to my craft room. We don't actually use this um, at all outside of this room. And I basically just use this for glitter or screen printing ink, whatever I need it for. And then I'll always just wash it and reuse it later. All right, so next I'm gonna open up my screen printing ink jar. And I'm just gonna take my spoon and actually dip this down into the ink like so. And then just drizzle a really good amount over the top of this frame. And you can really kind of go to town with this because anything that you don't use, you can always scrape off and back into the jar. You really wanna make sure that it kind of extends past the stencil on both sides. So as you can see, I'm bringing it all the way over here where my stencil actually ends right here and all the way over here where it actually ends right here. And the thing is you want this to be kind of smoothed out and pretty even across the top of this. All right, so I think that that should do the trick for us. All right, so now I'm scrubbing my squeegee like so. And this is another little tip that I picked up from Alex is actually using a little, um, basically a desk organizer like this right here. 
She actually uses a specific one from Walmart. This is just the one that I have on hand. And I'm actually taking a paper towel and just kind of tucking it into inside of there. So once I'm done actually dragging the screen printing ink with my squeegee, I can just kind of set it right back in here like so without getting anything else dirty or messy. All right, so one thing that's really important with all this is holding down the frame and making sure that it doesn't budge or move an inch. If you have a helper in your house that actually can hold this down for you, even better. However, if you're like me and you have nobody else except for the dogs to hold this down, just kind of take it with one hand and just kind of hold this down as firmly as you can to the shirt. Other hand, grab the squeegee like so, and with very kind of medium pressure, very even pressure, take this and drag this across the design. All right, so just like so. Now take a look also at your design. Make sure that everything is perfectly covered. Personally, I think I'm gonna go over this one more time. So I'm just gonna pick this back up. Like so. And then just redrag this. Just like that. Oops, okay, so I accidentally drizzled some of that screen printing ink on part of my design. So I'm actually gonna go back again, just make sure I have all this moved out as evenly as possible. All right, so holding down the shirt with one hand and then lifting this up with the other. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and just leave this for a second. And in the meantime, I actually can go and wash this out. All right, so since the screen printing ink on here is not super thick, what I'm gonna do to kind of help speed up the process of drying is just grabbing a hair dryer like so, and then just kind of going over this for a little while. Now I will say this, that if there's a really thick layer of screen printing ink on your fabric, then most likely you're gonna to have to actually wait overnight for it to completely and fully dry before moving on to the next step, which is heat setting the screen printing ink into your fabric. Now, we can do this a few different ways. We can use an actual household iron. We can also use an easy press or an actual heat press. For our purposes today, I'm just gonna go with an actual easy press too. And with this, I'm actually gonna set the temperature to 320 degrees for 40 seconds. And while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this cardstock for the actual easy press mat. All right, so I know I forgot to mention this earlier, but I am also using a Teflon sheet to cover up our design and our t-shirt with before applying our heat. This just really helps to dissipate the heat a little bit more evenly. You could also use a parchment paper as well, but I do recommend using something. All right, so now I'm just gonna apply this for 40 seconds with medium pressure. All right, you guys, I am absolutely obsessed with how this turned out. I think the saying is cute. I think it turned out really, really well. Just all around, like, I, I love it. Now, you might be wondering, well, Michael, why didn't you just do this with HTV? And that's a really good and valid question. The thing is, this is really, really good for people who's gonna be doing a lot of the same type of shirt or the same design on a lot of different shirts. That's a really good method for that to get it done and knocked out really, really quick. Also, this is great for people who just doesn't like the feel of HTV on their clothing. Some people don't, don't care for it, and this is a perfect alternative for those people. But since this is heat set now into our shirt, this is permanent, it's not going anywhere, and it's gonna last a really, really, really long time. Now, if you all liked today's episode, or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me and help me out so much here on YouTube. If you took two seconds to stamp that like button, as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you're new around here to this channel, well then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that little bell for all the notifications so that you never have to miss out on a single cricket minute. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching today's episode. It truly does mean the absolute world to me and I am just so, so, so extremely grateful for each and every single one of y'all. I love y'all to pieces and until next time, stay crafty.